Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at another source of power, geothermal energy. So let's dive right into it. So what it is, is basically that is heat inherent to earth itself. Basically, it's heat from down under. So where does that heat in the first place comes from? Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So first source of our energy that is, is that many of you know that star creates what's called accretion disk. Like there is a disk around a star that, you know, combines and becomes a planet. Now that when that happens, lot of energy is conserved in form of heat. Like, you know, that's why all the planets generally end up with a, you know, orbit that is more or less high. You don't have an orbit that is going like this, one another planet going like, little bit up and down is possible, but you more or less you will end up with a disk-like system. So when that happens, lot of energy is being conserved and lot of impact damage that is happening because of gravity. Like, you know, many of you have heard of something known as late bombardment period that happens because like, you know, once Earth become big enough, every small rock gets attracted towards it so that's like dumping a lot of heat energy into it now what happens to that heat because earth is in space space which is a vacuum it's insulated from everything there is nothing to conduct that heat away so that heat gets trapped inside now it starts to cool from the outside obviously that's why we have crust crust is the first thing that cooled now crust itself is cooled atmosphere itself cannot radiate too much heat away so this takes uh, millions and millions and millions and millions of years to actually cool down to the core point so till then we have infinite source of energy or basically as long as earth is there we have this source second the energy is coming from it's what's called radioactive uh, decay basically when you have uranium it gives off a little bit of radiation now imagine hundreds and thousands and thousands of megatons of uh, uranium and heavy elements being here that is you know dumping the rate it's not that much if you take one kilogram of it it's not giving that much heat but when you have earth size kind of object where you have gigatons of it it produces enough heat so these are the two source of heat that's giving heat to it it's not solar do not mistake it by solar solar does uh, you know affect how quickly it cools down or uh, how slowly it cools down but it is not the source of it this is independent from solar now many of you inherently know this geothermal energy by hot springs so why we have so much interest in it first it has very little to small environmental impact now you might be like okay why there is an environment impact if we are using this and i don't mean you know ener uh, energy you need to make this infrastructure i mean it inherently releases carbon dioxide now you might be like where is that carbon dioxide coming from that carbon dioxide is trapped in earth there is many other impact also B methane would be released many things get trapped underground and if you drill down there there is a risk that you can release them and over time you do release them like of course it's nowhere near like let's say for one megawatt you have to release uh, let's say one ton of co2 here it's invert of that it's like uh, for one ton, uh, megawatt you are barely releasing 10 kilo kilograms of co2 so inherently comp in comparison on balance it's a very very small fraction but it is there it's not zero it's not solar it's not zero it has some footprint and it's an ancient technology the oldest that we know of like there may be older than that is from chinese dynasty that is from 300 bc so suffice to say from very old time we know that and this has the one unique ability that very few uh, green power can provide it's what's called 24 into 7 power base load capacity basically it can give that much power and be done with it it's like it's gonna give you 800 megawatt no matter what depending on your plant size so how does it work well it's very crucial as this stage of humanity we are very location dependent basically you have to have nature helping you out here now where these hot springs are it's kind of random sometimes they uh, appear near a tectonic fault plate sometimes happens because of volcanoes so there is a lot of uh, natural element to it it's not just like you can just go anywhere and drill if you can drill very deep then it's not an issue but most uh, we don't have the technology yet to do so so at this point we are very location dependent that's why you will hear iceland philippines uh, all those places coming because they somehow naturally ended up in a place where they have a lot of geological activity which is giving them hot springs then once you find the location you drill now this drill is not your uh, normal water drill. this goes very deep upwards of two to three kilometers sometimes even deeper than that and uh, the bore diameter is also carefully calculated to maximize the energy output and then you set up a power plant the power plant setup is kind of bit different here because 
many of these power plant what they do is like they pump water directly into that well and that well starts to heat that water and then they have what's called drain well basically they are injecting water from one point it's heating it up steam is coming out from two other wells so it's kind of open uh, cycle system and that also creates another risk that it can create earthquakes not very powerful earthquake but minor earthquakes as in richter scale 3 most buildings can withstand it without any issue but it does make it geologically active because of that water creating pressure at that place where there is no water so it's kind of uh, very uh, unstable but if you have natural formation as in like uh, it already is a magma chamber there then you can uh, draw electricity out of it without causing major uh, ecological damage so we, if we have all these things, what kind of power can we expect? Uh, USA, Philippines and uh, Iceland, they are kind of leading the charge. USA is not leading the charge because uh, even though it, it has the biggest power plant there is, the glacier in USA, uh, problem is that it provides a very small fraction of energy of USA power consumption. And in case of Philippines, it, Philippines gets upwards of 17% of its total energy from geothermal. That's why you will hear uh, people say Philippines and uh, Iceland because they're getting larger proportion of their overall electricity from geothermal. But if you talk about raw power, like raw megawatts, USA is still in ahead. And second power plant is like 225 megawatts. And suffice to say, this uh, power plant, you may find this number to be quite small. And it is true because modern solar uh, cell farms that I have made a video about, it's already reaching a point where we are making 800 megawatt, 2000 megawatt, 20,000 megawatt. So suffice to say, it's not as powerful as we think so but it still provides a unique source of energy now what we can expect in the future it's uh, very simple we want to reduce emission by any and all means possible so older designs were not taking into consideration the emission that used to happen because of this it was so little that they didn't care now they do care now they're like okay let's reduce that co2 emission let's try to make sure not meet if methane starts to come out they burn it because carbon dioxide uh, is a lesser of two evils basically so we will burn the methane and there is arsenic other things mercury things starts to come out so we have to filter it out we don't want to directly release into the atmosphere so we are uh, making sure even the old power plants that have been working for 20 30 to 50 years they are getting uh, new smoke stacks to clean those uh, things out and we have to create in such a way iceland recently was making a very big plant and the problem they cancelled it because they started creating earthquakes now not big powerful earthquake you may not even notice it if you are in a car or things like that but it did start it to create a unbalanced scenario that happens because we started using fracking the fracking technology that we use for oil extraction and it has the ability to destabilize a localized area it's not gonna cause a cataclysmic level earthquake but it can destabilize local region so for that reason we have to do better studies in this and the final nail in the coffin why geothermal is not becoming as popular as it could be is because of its low efficiency basically to extract the power out of it at the, at the end of the day I always specify money talks so because of this low efficiency, that means if you spent uh, whatever money you spent let's say one billion dollar to build a plant it will take very long time to get that one billion dollar back and not to mention things break you need maintenance money you need uh, replacement money as in like any component breaks down you also need to pay for staff you also need to pay for taxes you also need to compensate for inflation so this efficiency is very uh, serious bottleneck we can have a lot more uh, power from geothermal but we cannot because you know it does not have enough efficiency but it is profitable any company or country that does that most places it is profitable it's just not as lucrative as solar as i already mentioned in my solar video that uh, solar is reaching price parity this is far from it however it does provide base load capacity so this was my small presentation on geothermal energy i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't eh, dislike it and uh, leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of science thursday and i would suggest you subscribe and press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching